Today, we're once again talking with Aaron from Wild, and today we're talking all things prepaid funerals. So maybe to kick off, Aaron, what are the benefits of prepaying for your funeral? Absolutely, Wendy. So firstly, it's that sigh of relief you, you might achieve when you've actually done something that's looming in your back, the back of your mind for, for years, if not decades. It just feels good to have certain things sorted in life. But one of the key benefits is the money is going to be there if you've either paid it off in one go or if you're putting money for a certain uh, outcome, being able to pay for your future funeral or that of a loved one, you know the money's there. That's really, really crucial because it's hard to save for things and prices go up and up. And one of the key things to be aware of is if it's a prepaid one, then that price never goes up. It's locked in, which is a key thing to look for when you're looking to prepay rather than some plans where you're just putting money in, but then the price keeps going up as well. You know, that's a really, uh, I guess, is a really good way to think about it. You're getting the pricing. You're getting the pricing now, not what it will be in how many years' time. Yeah, so it can be as long as you buy the right sort of arrangement that locks in that price. Not yeah. everything will do that. Yeah. Um, so it might be a bit of a silly question, but there's pre-arranged funerals and prepaid funerals. Um, is there any arrangements linked to a prepaid funeral? And why? Well, I guess what's what's the what's yeah, I'll the get a terminology of there. Yeah. So people can generally go to a funeral director, funeral home, and just arrange things. They'd like to put certain things in place. Um, it starts to become solidified and concretized when you actually have a contract and you're putting money aside for a specific outcome. So that would be a prepaid funeral, and that can be something that's very lavish or probably more common, at least within at will, it's really looking at things that are really quite simplified. And it, that's for people who generally would just want to keep things affordable for themselves and their family, and they know what they want, and it's relatively straightforward. So that's prepaying. But again, prearranging, you can make all the plans in the world. And some groups will then say, well, let's put money aside in a funeral bond. But the key distinction there is, again, if it's not fixed, yes, you're saving, but the price is will jump up and down, or not down, they'll jump up generally. And also yeah. along comes family members and, and they add their bid and they add their bid and all of a sudden the prices can really explode. So do you recommend a lump sum payment or instalments? And like, is there really any difference? Do you end up paying more if you do it um, in, in instalments or? Yeah, sure. I mean, I would say it's horses for courses, uh, just like some people like analog watches and some people like digital, but it's not just personal taste. Some people can't afford putting away several thousands of dollars just in one go, they just don't have it. They need to put money aside and that's fine. Um, other people, they have the money and they just prefer to not ever think about it again. And it is generally much cheaper or quite a bit cheaper to just pay it off without having to pay extra fees. Uh, and think about it, every time there's a debit on an account, someone gets charged and, and it, even the money's getting collected at a slower rate. So it does add to the the costs that end up with the consumer if you do pay it on instalments, but it depends, horses for courses. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Are there any common mistakes that people make, you know, when they're funeral planning? I, it's it's um, it's one of those things, isn't it, where you're sort of like, well, how many mistakes could you make? But is there something that you <laughs> yeah. think that people ultimately should think about when they're planning yeah. their funeral? So the first is that key distinction of, is it just prearranged and you're putting money aside, but and it's not really locked in? And, and they people might think, oh, yeah, it's locked in, but it's not. That's probably quite central. This also opens up a whole question, and we haven't specifically had a question on what is funeral insurance, but there's a lot of, uh, and I'd like to just explain what funeral insurance is, but there's a lot of misunderstanding about how that works and how that is like seen as an ideal way to save for a funeral. And at times it can be beneficial, but it can be quite disastrous. So... Funeral insurance is a bit like a life insurance policy that's really narrowed down to several thousands of dollars, could be 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars for one's funeral. Good concept. People are putting aside money, premiums that will one day magically, not magically, but will produce a payout for a person's funeral. That, that's a good thing. Um, one of the key problems around that is number one, they still haven't necessarily locked in what that will be. Those prices can go up. They still need to make the various arrangements and families may not really know what the individual wants uh, out of their funeral, whether they want to keep it simple and modest or they want to do something lavish, but they may not necessarily have that. They've just been essentially sold. Oh, we need to put 10, we need to pay out of 10,000 or 
15 or 20, whatever it is, and here are the premiums. And a lot of times people are not realizing that with many providers, possibly almost all providers, the premiums actually go up as we get older. So you've got to, if you're doing funeral insurance, you really have to be aware, are these premiums going to go up and up and up, which has happened with many providers. And one of the key problems, I guess, is if you add up all of those premiums, <laughs> yes, there might be a payout of ten or $20,000, but you might have spent more than that to get there for a service or product that really could have just been purchased for several thousands of dollars if you'd paid up front. So in our business, we do get a lot of people who have been with funeral insurance and are quite regretful about that, or they're considering the two and they're viewing a prepaid funeral to be much more advantageous. I will say funeral insurance does have a, a positive in the sense that if you die quickly, there's a payment that comes quickly and all of a sudden there's money. So that's great. <laughs> But um, you do have to survive the, uh, I think normally is a 12 month survival period. So die after 13 months and you win, so to speak. But um, look, just need to be aware what is suitable for you. Is it an insurance product like a funeral insurance or having a prepay that you fix it all in and just pay it off? They're the, they're the, the key options. Yeah, no, I think that's been really valuable. And certainly for me, I think, you know, when you're talking about the starts at 60 older audience, I think that there, you know, it sounds there's a lot of advantages of thinking about doing a prepaid funeral. So I think that that's been you know, a real takeout for me from today's conversation. Do you have any final tips for funeral planning? Yeah, I do. And that is try to talk about it with others, what you actually want, what their experiences are. Some people have had a lot of experience that, you know, buried a a sibling, a, a parent, a spouse, a child, and they know what is involved and other people just haven't quite dealt with it yet. So try to talk about it, find out what they did, what worked and what didn't work um, and what you actually want. And just simple things like, you know, do I want something that's really uh, personal and lavish or am I the sort of person that wants to keep things really quite simple and affordable? Um, do I want burial or cremation? Do, you know, do I value things like the, you know, something extravagant for a coffin or, or and then just working these things out, discussing it so your loved one knows. And I will also mention, not just because I'm from Wild, but having this documented and actually having your executors on your will know because it's your executors who will have to carry this out. So keeping them informed of whatever you want and whatever you put in place. If you put a prepaid funeral in place, best to tell your loved ones, tell your executor, because they're the ones who have to carry the baton and, and get it all done. That's such great advice as always. Aaron, thank you so much for your time today. Really my pleasure. Take care.